is in Grand Isle, Louisiana, and my that place has evacuated a couple of days ago. Uh, take us through sort of what you're seeing right now, perhaps some of the strongest conditions from the storm so far. Well, we have really missed most of the weather, even though we're about to see the landfall here on the coast in the next couple of hours. The winds have backed off. We've had a couple of squalls this morning, but now the sun is trying to break through. And what we're showing you is the neighborhoods, the neighborhoods that have been flooded by this tropical storm. And let's bring in the mayor, Mayor David uh, uh, Comadell from here in Grand Isle. He's been the mayor since 1994. Mayor, thanks for joining us and letting us use your truck to give everybody an idea of what happens even with a minimal tropical storm on this barrier island. Exactly. You can see we had a 12-foot levee. This is the beach where the orange signs at and what's happening. The last time that we flooded this series was Hurricane Juan. This brings back memories of Hurricane Juan. And I'm going to show you as we're traveling that most of the residents that live here, we didn't expect this at all. And at the meantime, we thought it was two to four feet. In the meantime, it's still coming in, and with the eye a little to the west of us, and like I said, we've got some concerns that what's going to happen next is going to push more and more water. And most of these homes here are locals, not rental properties, not vacation rentals. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you look to the left, you look to the right, and like I said, it's, that's our people. And uh, we, for years, we've been trying to build a little levy system. And you're going to see as we turn the pump stations, we have you're going to see coming up. You're going to see some beautiful homes to the left and the right. And these are all working people, families. And by the storm passing to the east of us and, and coming in, I mean, coming right to us to the eye like it did for Betsy, this is the type of flooding that, you know, we didn't expect today. You know, and like just a, a tropical storm, we want the people to know out there that you got to take everything serious when it comes to storm. But again, it's still not here yet. And that's why you had that mandatory evacuation kick in Friday morning at 6. People, because I heard people in the grocery saying, oh, this is not going to be much of anything. And if you talk about the wind and the rainfall, yes, yeah, so far, we haven't even had a gust of 40. Yeah. And we've had less than an inch and a half of rain. But you just look around, I mean, all the way from Route 1, which is right at the beach there on the other side of the berm, and then all the way back. If uh, Chris Erickson can swing around, we're looking all the way back towards, is that Barataria Bay back there? Yeah, Barataria's to the right, but this is coming out of being that area, yes, sir. So yes. we're, what, about three or four miles north of the bridge? Uh, about four miles, yes. Four miles north of the bridge, bridge. and that's the only way in and out of, of the island. Exactly, exactly. You see the home on the left, right, and this side right here. This, this, home. this home here is a beautiful home. Yes. Uh, it's a businessman, and uh, he buys all the shrimp, and this, him and his wife have a beautiful home and, and it's not very few times you know they, we've been flooded but lately the last few years what's happening this is this is just a tropical storm and and we didn't expect this at all so that's why we call a mandatory evacuation between elected officials myself and work with other parishes so again out of out of all you know Mike out of all of all the storms we ground zero grand Isle, if you look at all the parishes right now just got out of a conference call and I'm telling them I'm flooding okay mayor David uh Commandale of uh, here in Grand Isle. Thanks for joining us. He's going to stay with us, and we're going to show you throughout the afternoon here on the Weather Channel uh, what we're seeing here in Grand Isle. Again, uh, flooding and covering a lot of the city. You can't get in and out right now, and it's going to be a while before the water goes down because you're going to have to get that onshore wind to uh, back off. That's going to be sometime tomorrow. Uh, meanwhile, far, far away from the actual center, Tevin Wooten is in Pensacola Beach, and Tevin, actually all the action yesterday was in Florida, including those tornadoes around Orlando. Good afternoon. Welcome back to Grand Isle, Louisiana. We're looking live at Biloxi, Mississippi, Charles Peak there, and there's some light rain, but look at the surf. The winds right now are running at about 20, 25 miles an hour, gusts 30 to 35 miles an hour. This is the Ken Combs Pier in Biloxi. The Gulf of Mexico is churned up all the way from Tampa Bay, Marco Island, southwest Florida, all the way over to the Texas, upper Texas Gulf Coast. Now, where we are here, we're getting the issues with water getting pushed in from the back bay, Bay Area area into the town of Grand Isle. We didn't get the wind and the rain uh, and the push of water uh, significantly like they've seen over to our uh, east. But here in Grand Isle, you can see we've got the pumps. We also have the mayor, David uh, Comadell, here to explain what's going on because these pumps are not all. Why is that? Exactly. Well, we didn't expect this type of water to come in. So our, our team, we, you know, my workers came in and we put the pumps up yesterday evening. And all of a sudden this morning, you can see the uh, it's covered brand new pumps we got generators when electricity goes off and and what happens what happens is uh we didn't want to put nothing like this here usually after the storm when we know a major storm's coming 
that you put your pumps out right here. But the, the problem we're having now is just a tropical storm, and look what we have. We have a big, you know, all these brand new pumps in here. So we're going to wait for the water to fall, start falling back at the Barrettary Bay so we can put these pumps on. What do you think that will be? Well, it depends. You know, we're still, what, 90 miles from the eye, so we're looking at uh, maybe another four or five hours with the tide coming up. So maybe sometime during the morning we can start pumping out. But again, this is just a tropical storm, the little levees that we have. That's why we're asking the federal government to step in and start helping us build, build levees like we did on the south side, right. 12 foot high, so we can prevent this. I don't want to go to my senator, my congressman, and beg every six months. All you see a little ridge like this, if I can pick them up for about 12 foot like I did the south side, I can prevent small storms like this. And how long do you estimate it will take to get this water out pumped out, assuming we don't have a lot of rain? Well, if the tides, Mike, if the tides, if the tides go ahead and they come around and, and start falling hard like they're supposed to after the high hits us, what's going to happen is you're looking at more pumps that are ordered get with the parish and elected officials and the governor. You're looking at where we could come in and probably pump this, you know, about 80, 84 hours if we get additional pumps. The common time is about 76 hours, but this is much more water than we ever had. Wow. Okay, Mayor, we'll uh, stay with you. We're going to stay moving here. Again, we're in Grand Isle, Louisiana. This is a barrier island about two hours south of New Orleans, very susceptible to flooding. Uh, they get a brush by or a hit from a tropical system about every 2.3 years, so they're used to this. We'll come back here. Let's first go back uh, down the coast, or I should say well to our east, to Pensacola Beach, Florida. Tevin Wooten is getting the wind there. Tevin, we're not officially in the center, but it's a broad circulation, and our winds have certainly backed off here on Grand Isle is in Grand Isle and I know that flooding is certainly an issue where you're at Mike Indeed, we've got the uh, water that's come in from the Barataria Bay. This is not coming directly in from the Gulf of Mexico. It's coming in from the backside. And what we're doing now is going up towards one of the pumping stations. They've had to been, uh, they've been turned off because the water got higher than expected. Some of the water now three to four feet deep. And we've got the uh, mayor here, David Comadell from Grand Isle. We're following one of his vehicles. What's the plan at this point? The plan is we've got many, uh, this is where the heart of the system is. And like I said, we didn't expect that earlier, the water came in. So you're going to see my guys still fighting to put the pumps up and make it sure that we get, as soon as the water recedes and whatever's trapped on this side of the levee and the roads, we're going to go ahead and start pumping out. Yeah, so people can get back into their homes. And most of the people here, as we talked about earlier, are residents. They're not vacationers because we have the mandatory evacuation. Right, right. And you can see uh, what's happening right now is this is the, behind toward Barataria Bay. And this is where the road, we want to come in and continue our levees on this side and turn into the pump station. One of the heart of the systems, they, they, watch yourself. Watch it out. Yeah. And the old trees, uh, like I said, they were, they, were, they were coming in, and we want to make sure that we do it. Okay. We're going to continue following the situation here in Grand Isle as we await the landfall of the tropical system, which is immaterial because we've got major impacts across the Gulf Coast. We'll go back to Tevin Wooden in Pensacola Beach next. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Gulf Coast. This is Mike Seidel in Grand Isle. But over there on the other side of the screen, you see the alive picture from Gulfport, Mississippi, one road underwater. And again, uh, some angry surf throughout the Gulf Coast since Friday night in advance of Tropical Storm Cristobal, which will make landfall in this area in the next couple of hours, next several hours. And also, over to the east of there, to past Christian, Mississippi. Boy, remember Camille in 1969. And again, another shot of how much water is over the beaches uh, along the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. Also a lot of heavy rain we had this morning. More coming in and still that uh, tornado threat, that low level tornado threat will continue right into Monday all the way inland up through parts of Mississippi, Louisiana and in Arkansas, maybe even western Tennessee. And there could be some tornadoes on Tuesday as the system heads into the Midwest. We'll keep an eye on Chicago for sure. Back here we're in Grand Isle. We're behind uh, what was the levee, the low uh, level levee on the backside of the island of about four feet, did not hold back Barataria Bay. We've got more rain coming in. We also have the mayor over here, uh, David Comadell. And we're at another pumping station, David, which is turned off because the water got too high to keep it running. Exactly. You can see that we came through the night with the workers I have, and you can see that the neighbors are coming in and, and enjoying themselves to get to, to the pumps. But what I'm saying is we, we took all the switches off. There's nothing we can do until the water resides back into Barataria Bay. So that's another pump station. We have a total of 16 of them. And in the meantime, that's that's one of them. That that's one of the main 
of the orders of the faculty residents that we'll make sure that we're going to pump out. Okay, thanks, David. We'll check back with you. Again, a lot of the island is underwater, including a lot of Route 1, and that's the only way in and out, thus the mandatory evacuation, which kicked in on Friday morning for good reason for visitors and everybody, but a lot of locals stuck around. Let's go back to Tevin Wooten. He's on the coast. Yeah, and the uh, landfall here is kind of immaterial. We're not talking about a distinct tropical storm with a core and a right front quadrant. So we're getting some rain right now. There's a band that has come through us. We had some pretty heavy rain, but notice it's coming down vertically. We have very little wind now as we are near that broad center of circulation of Cristobal. We're here in the streets of Grand Isle, and if you get off Route 1, Louisiana Route 1, this is what you see. Look at these neighborhoods all the way back to Barataria Bay are underwater as the water comes in from the back. You also notice the trees surrounding me, and those trees are here, and they, they build the homes within the trees to protect them from strong winds, tropical storms, and hurricanes. We've also got the mayor, David uh, Comedow, here on the back of the flatbed truck. We're practicing that safe distance, and we've been talking to him all morning about how surprised they were that they got this much water, although there was a surge watch up for two to four feet. We've seen more than that in some areas, and we've got pumps, but the pumps are not on yet because the water is too high. Exactly. You can see the maintenance shop, my guys, and in and out the maintenance shop of City Hall. And you can see the City Hall again going to the left right here. Um, that's the, the town of Grand Isle. This building was built in 1919 for the first the Coast Guard station. So it's been here. We refurbished it since Katrina. And you can see the trees, like Mike said, it's a tunnel like going toward Barry Bay. This is where the natives, and you look to the left, this is the Catholic Church uh, in the 1900s. And over there, this one went through Betsy in 1965, the new church, Catholic Church. And you can see the water and you can see the trees. And you can see how the water comes in on the backside. And usually that's a major storm. But being it's a tropical storm, it pushed more water in. And like you said, the eye is on its way. And this is why you put that mandatory evacuation in effect Friday morning at 6, because there was a lot of chatter in the grocery. Yeah, this is not going to be a big deal, mostly from the locals. But this is why you get the, at least the visitors, the RVs, the campers, the boats off the island, because right. we just heard that Route 1 is now closed. Exactly. That was the main thing between the council itself and the chief. We had to make a decision. We got criticized by that. But it's the first thing you want to do, because you've got a state park with about 55 campers from all over the United States. So we made sure that we, we had to get them out, you know. And building codes have improved dramatically with FEMA since Katrina. You notice just about everything you see, it's hard to find anything that's not on stilts for good reason. Exactly, exactly. You can see the metal roofs, and now you see the front of us as we're going, you can see the oak trees, the tunnel. And this is where the natives like to live. They like to live to protect from the storms. When it's blowing 100 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour, like the wind gusts up to 50, you don't have, you just got a little breeze here. So that's been here since the early 1800s when they started building. And that's where the true natives from Grand Isle live at. And this goes to the fact that this is a broad circulation, even though the center is not far from us. But look, hardly a whiff of wind here. Exactly, exactly, yeah. What would have happened if a Category 2 would come, you know? And you can see the old houses re remodeled. Uh, these here been in the early 1900s to the right. And the first grocery store in the early 1900s is right up ahead. You're going to see uh, on the right-hand side. Um, we refurbished it a little bit to the area to the right. We got with the family. And uh, this is the first the homes of the Augustines. And that's where the first mailbox, uh, the, the post office, used to be in the early 1800s. And look at the native, look at the trees. It was always protected. This has been here since the early 1900s. It's still here to build. It's been through a lot. It's been through a lot of storms. It had wood floors that buckled through the storms. But again, uh, you're going to see us. You're going to see us turn around and, and, and make a left. You're going to see some more people at it. Okay. Mayor David Comedale, thanks for the uh, tour here of Grand Isle. As far as you can see, water everywhere. Route 1 is closed. You can't get in here, and it's going to take a while for that water to back off and to be pumped out. It may take three days, as the mayor said, to pump all the water out of these neighborhoods back on the bay side. Let's go back to Pensacola, where they don't have the flooding situation, but boy, that surf is uh, ramped up, and you're still getting heavy rain and a lot more wind, Tevin, than we're seeing here near the center of the tropical storm. Let's get out to Mike Seidel right now. He's been in Grand Isle. And, uh, Mike, uh, you know, very interesting storm, not one that has a whole lot of wind near the core, but certainly because it's been so large, it's been piling up the water, and that is the, the worst of the effects there in Grand Isle.
Now, by far, Carl, it's the water in the streets and on the highways. And what we're showing you now is some of the pumps. This pump is actually on. Some of those are not running because they're underwater until that water uh, gets out of the way and leaves the area on the other side of the levee. They will not run. But right now, we've got the mayor, David Comedell, on the other end of the truck. And, David, tell us a little bit about these two pumps. One is diesel, one's electric. Exactly. This, you're going to see the electric one because we never lost electricity, Mike. We've got a generator on standby. In the meantime, we got the one right here, the diesel motor, on this side of it. And you can see the main thing is you see the water's not coming over the levee in this area. So what's happening, we get to pump the residents on this side to push the water. So we, got, we came in and we put this type of generator, uh, diesel motor, I'm sorry, diesel motor pump, and that's 12 inch line, and that'll make sure that we get the water. Now we have another one by the telephone pole all along the levee. And you can see that now that it's like coming back into the community, we can pump it back to Barrettary Bay. So that's a good sign in this area here. So again, that's where we at, Mike. Okay, thanks, David. David Comedale, Mayor here of Grand Isle, Louisiana. And as we often tell you, don't look at the center of the storm, especially with this one. The worst weather by far has been in the Sunshine State of Florida. Let's go back to Carl Parker with an update on that tornado warning near Lake City. Carl? We go to the west by about two hours and two and a half hours to uh, Mike Seidel. Mike is in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Mike, is it drier there for you and windy or are we still windy and wet? We have little, if any, wind. We're near the center of the circulation. In fact, now we're seeing some blue sky pop up here as we look off towards the south, towards the Gulf of Mexico. We're about two blocks in. And once you get in when, inland from Route 1 on this barrier island, this is what you see. Look ahead of me. It's just water, water everywhere. Now, this water has come in from Barataria Bay. It's come in from the backside, which is pretty typical. This is not coming over that 10 to 12-foot berm on the Gulf side. That's keeping those places in pretty good shape. When you got to recognize all the building codes that have improved. The roofs here do not have shingles for the most part. And everything back in this neighborhood is on stilts. So although it is a mess and there's, all, you know, two, three, in some spots, four feet of water, uh, the homes are fine. Everything is built up on stilts up about, gosh, what is that, about eight, nine, ten feet. Got some locals out there enjoying the, uh, the calm here in Grand Isle, Louisiana. This is about two hours south of New Orleans. They put a manager evacuation in effect on Friday morning for good reason and now we just have to wait for the water to back out it's going to take a day or two to get all the water out of these streets in the meantime quite a storm we've had tornado warnings ongoing in parts of Florida and the Florida Panhandle will update you on the severe threat and the rain and the wind headed towards Little Rock Memphis and eventually Chicago this week it's all coming up here on the Weather Channel all right, we want to get to Mike Seidel. He's in Grand Isle in Louisiana. And Mike, uh, a lot of issues with uh, water there, as is often the case in uh, those low-lying parts of southeast Louisiana. Yeah, this is your basic barrier island. The official elevation is about seven feet, so it doesn't take much. And when you have a surge of uh, three, four feet, we don't know what the official number is at the gauge, but I can tell you what we've seen back here. We're talking to the mayor, Mayor uh, David Comedell, and we're going through some of these neighborhoods. Now, these are basically locals in this area. This is not the rental properties or the uh, motels or hotels. Most of those are out on Louisiana Route 1, and a lot of that is underwater. But everything here, just about everything, is on stilts. You can see someone back in the back there pulling a four-wheeler through the water. We've seen boats coming and going uh, through this uh, water. The water's going to back off. Most of these homes by far are fine, but it's the process of just getting this water pumped out. Here comes a boat right now uh, through the water. How you doing? Cajun Navy. Cajun Navy. So there you go. They've got their uh, good-looking dog on board. Let's talk to the mayor about what we're seeing and the timeline on getting this water pumped up, knowing that we're still going to have a southerly wind uh, pushing water into the bay and back into where we are through tomorrow. Well, you can see it right behind you. The, the last time we just filmed a few minutes ago, uh, we looked like the water's not coming over, so we are start pumping in this area. And like you said, you can see to the left and to the right, this is where the natives live. They're protected by the trees for the hurricanes. And the last time we've been flooded like this, it was a... Maybe 
major little storm. Here. Yeah, yeah, Barry, Barry, yeah. yeah and, and like I said, a little tropical storm. You can see the families we have here. And like I said, since we elevated the homes, and that's why we're trying to get levees to protect our people. Okay. There you go. Everybody's up, up there high. They're safe. Uh, just waiting for the water to go out. Let's go uh, over to Pensacola, Florida, where they've had a lot more weather in the state of Florida. Tornado warnings, a much more wind and rain. Tevin Wooten, you've uh, seen that today alone. You've got the winds gusting over 30. Meanwhile, where we are near the center, the wind is almost right now dead calm, and we've got some blue skies overhead. Meteorologist Mike Seidel, who is live for us in Grand Isle. Mike. Hey, Tevin, back here in Grand Isle, where a lot of the town from Louisiana Route 1, there's the beach over that berm. That's about a 10 to 12 foot berm in the distance, and all the way back to the bay is underwater. Also, notice the blue sky. It's the center of Cristobal. Gets on the coast here shortly. It's not your typical tropical system. That's why we have tornado warnings continuing all the way over in the Florida Panhandle. More on those tornado warnings and tomorrow's forecast, where this heads next and the impacts next. Closer to the core of this storm, a good uh, five, six hundred miles away, and that's where Mike Seidel is. And Mike, uh, we've certainly seen some wind in the area. We've seen some rain, but the biggest problem where you are has been uh, the water rising in that area. Yeah, by far, we've had maybe two inches of rain or winds. I couldn't find a gust in this area over 40 miles an hour. So it has been all about the uh, the flooding, and it's all coming in from Barataria Bay over to my right. Now we're on Route 1. We've come over the main bridge, and we're in this area of Grand Isle before you uh, exit and head towards uh, back towards New Orleans. We're about two hours away. And typical of a barrier island, you've got to deal with Mother Nature. Everything here is up on stilts. We've got the mayor, David Common out here. He's been on the back of the truck with us a safe distance away, although we love him to death. And uh, he's giving us kind of a play-by-play -play what we're seeing and what has happened here. And this is, you know, this is a tropical storm and it doesn't even really have a core. It's, it's, it's not really a typical tropical storm. And look at the impacts you have just from this. And this remembers this, like I'm telling you, for a hurricane. When, when we came in and you looked at it, it was like Hurricane Juan and our people's in shock. You see the residents left their core. Yes. trucks, taking it what they expect that, Mike. So now you're seeing in this area, the audit that came from Barrettary Bay comes over the road. Now we got to pump that out, which will probably take about three to four days. But we got more pumps coming in to help us pump this out. So you're going to add pumps here. We've yes, already sir. seen the water come down in the distance. Chris, I don't know if you can spin around and show us that debris field in the distance. Is that a little too far away? Maybe a bit too far away. But you can see the water has come down on Route 1. What we're driving through is about six to eight inches deep of salt water. And now we're coming up here to where the water again is backing off but either side of Route 1 here in Louisiana, Route 1 in Grand Isle has the flooding. Now when we get back into town, the main part of town over the bridge, it's primarily on the north side and not on the Gulf side. What's going on here, Mayor? Uh, everybody's. Oh, that's the sheriff. That's our sheriff. Oh, that's the sheriff. Hello, that's sheriff. sheriff. That's Sheriff Lafouche Parish. Yes. How, hey, how's sheriff. the sheriff? Uh, how's the sheriff of Jefferson Parish? No, Lafouche Parish. Lafouche Parish. This, this sheriff always comes in and check with us. Well, we're, we, we, he appreciates that, right? Yes, yes. People in Grand Isle have dual citizenship. Oh, okay. Yes. He says that the people in Grand Isle have dual citizenship. That's, yes, this that's sheriff, funny. This sheriff's unbelievable. He's always checking on us during the storm, before the storm, and after the storm. That's He's great. Always... How are things up in Lafouche Parish? Look, I'll tell you, if we had thunderstorms that are worse, it's the first hurricane where I needed suntan lotion. First hurricane where you need it. Well, it's not a hurricane. It's just a tropical storm. Yeah. Okay, let's. We're going to go to uh, Kevin, uh, Tevin Wooten, who's dealing with a lot more weather. Not dealing with the flooding like this, but a lot more visual weather with the wind, the surf, and the uh, squalls. Tevin's over there, Pensacola Beach. Tevin, save yeah, me, yeah, please. Mike, we're not really dealing with any inland flooding. I want to get out now to Mike Seidel. He's in Grand Isle, Louisiana. And uh, Mike's been reporting on the water rise there in Grand Isle and you know Mike you know as you look around you all those houses are, are elevated by what a good uh, 12 14 feet so that's a way of life essentially in that part of the world 
Yeah, you have to do that because it doesn't take much, as we saw today from this tropical storm, to put a lot of the town underwater. But what we want to show you now, we've gotten out of our truck and we're back out on the golf, and much of the town has a 10 to 12 foot levee between the properties on Route 1, US 1, Louisiana US 1, and the golf in a wide area. But this part of town down near the bridge, that's not the case. We've got the mayor, David Commodell here, and tell us what we're seeing because it looks like you've had some serious erosion and we don't have that wide stretch of protection like we do just a mile or two up the coast. Exactly. The, the levee's about 160 feet. We've got about 80 feet from where I'm standing. You can see the clay and the geo two, the texture that's sticking out. I was standing here yesterday, they, yesterday and showed the media that this is going to be gone. The Corps is supposed to continue putting rocks in the Gulf. By putting the rocks in the Gulf, it stirs it up, it makes it like chocolate milk, and it rebuilds the levee. But they only put five segments here, and we need to continue like we're doing on the east side. By doing it on the east side, we don't have no problems on that side. They need to continue putting the rocks That's so we can protect the it. Exactly. Without this, it's like putting three packs of sugar on the table, taking a glass of water. That's what happened. We lost 80 more feet of this. And tonight, it's still going to be high. Tomorrow morning, it's be high. It'll probably be another 30 feet when the tropical storm's passing us up. You know, the government knows that it's got to be done. you got to put rocks in the Gulf. The rougher it gets, the better it works. It stirs the sediment. It throws Without no protection, we're just going to continue having some erosion. But like we see back on the East Coast where I'm from with the beach replenishment every several years, that's out of the question here. But if it's spending that type of money. But over here it works. I can bring you on the East Side. You saw it earlier, uh, you know, the day before the storm, and you see how beautiful it works. And that, in this side, for some reason, they won't do it. So, again, I don't want to go to my senator's doors every six months and knock in Washington, D.C. that I need another $8 million. We finally got $30 million to do it. They done spent $5 million, and they didn't do it right there. They just put the rock too small. They should have finished this project. Now, I called them up, took pictures, and I told them, look, I want to work together. But it's common sense. Something that you design on that end, just listen, you put rocks in the Gulf, I'm going to leave you alone. I never bring you on that side, Alan. It's got to be done on this side. I'm worried. The storm's not over with. What you see here, and you see the tides going out. When you come here tomorrow morning, the tide about 11 o'clock. Even though the storm's not here, you're going to see all this scouring just falling into the boat. Uh, exactly. Here. Yes, sir. Yeah. You're going to lose. So well, it's time to wake know, up. You know. And many would say you're fighting a losing battle. No, not if you put the rocks. I can show you on the east side. I fight a losing battle. Look at the, look at the nice, beautiful place you got here. All these beautiful places. This is paradise. Spin it right. It works on this side. It works on that side. Once you put rocks, I guarantee you, you never have to come back and do this. Okay. Just common sense. Well, we, we, we hope you get your rocks. Right. Then we have the latest from the National Hurricane Center, Carl Parker. Maybe a landfall, and it looks like it may be just a little to our east, Carl, based on that visible shot and that swirl. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, it all depends on where they decide the center is. How's it uh, going, Mike? A lot different over here, even though we're right near the center, uh, right here on the coast of Barrier Island of Grand Isle. And all around us, you can see what they've experienced today from the flooding coming in from Barataria Bay. The winds here have been basically calm for about three hours. So it tells me we're near that broad center. It may have made landfall right over us. Hard to tell. It's not your classic tropical storm. We don't have an eye or an eye wall or a right front quadrant. But we do have the mayor, David uh, Commodow, who's been nice to spend his afternoon with us. This is our last chance to talk to him about the water and how it's backed up into these neighborhoods. Yes, you can see the flooding that's going on in this area here. And uh, you see the, the kid playing. But the water came up, you can see a couple of feet on the piling. And what's happening, it's receding. It's going It's going back to the back bay, back to bay. Hi, how you doing? And this is families here that live here. And uh, like I said, we didn't expect this for this tropical so a storm. You know, So again, uh, you've seen what we've done today. You've seen, we, we, we showed every place they had. So we're just asking the federal government to come step up and, and build our levees. And in the meantime, uh, you know, you've seen the beach side, you've seen the back side. And I finished putting the rocks. All and I'm the asking pumps, for, the pumps are on. All the pumps are on. Beans are the water's falling. How, how long, how many days to get this out? You think a couple days? Probably with the current right I can get this out in three days. But where the residents live more in the, in the central part with the oak trees that you've seen earlier, that's where it's going to take me longer. Because there's a, a little deeper slope in that area, you know. Okay, so Mayor. Again, uh, I want to thank you all. And like I said, uh, you know, we're there to, uh, to to make sure that we're going to. My saying is, as long as there's one grain of sand in my island, I'm going to keep the American flag flying. I can well, we appreciate that.
You've been mayor here since 1994. You've lived here all your life. You've been through Betsy, Camille. Uh, of course, that was a little farther off to the east. Katrina, Isaac, uh, all the storms. And it goes to show you that you're dealing with Mother Nature. You got water on both sides, and it didn't take much. We didn't even have a wind gust here to 40 miles an hour, and all this water that's got to be pumped out. Fortunately, exactly. the, because of the building codes, everything's on stilts. Exactly. And like you said, you know, in every home that you see, we try to elevate them, working with the government. So in the meantime. You know, just a, just knowing it's a tropical storm, it, it looked like things are changing. And in the meantime, we, like I said, we want to protect our people. Right, you know? right. Okay. Let's go back to uh, the Weather Channel. Meteorologist Chris Warren. Chris, you and Jim looking at the visible satellite photo. Hard to tell if... We've uh, seen landfall over us or not. We've had a lot of blue sky, but the wind, as you can see, there's hardly a whiff of wind, and that's the way it's been now for several hours here on Grand Isle. Yeah, yeah, Mike, uh, what is seen there indeed. And as far as landfall goes, Jim Cantori's right over there. I'm going to know about a, a half a second after landfall happens. So, Yeah, Mike, a couple of...